be a very pleasant experience uh, and some really genuine experiences from that uh, first round and uh, subsequent meetings. So, yeah, looking forward to getting this uh, district-wide um, initiative's feedback uh, along our journey. And then next week and the week after, we'll be out to the individual communities. So, yeah, thank you. Um, perhaps now to Janet. Uh, yeah, Kara, everybody. Um, so Janet Gabba, I'm the ward councillor for Ngārawahia, or one of the ward councillors for Ngārawahia, and on the steering group, um, steering group, um, councillor group. And um, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's a bit of a challenge because we've not really done this sort of thing with presenting um, to everybody before, unless it's been in a workshop. So um, yeah, looking forward to the feedback. Thank you. Maybe pass on to Clive. Should we go around the room that way? Thank you, Councillor Gibb. Yep, Clive Morgan. Um, I'm on staff at Waikato District Council as Community Growth GM, General Manager. Um, very passionate about the blueprints. Um, enjoyed working with the councillors through the process, along with Cobus Mintz. Um, who guided us, um, given it was our first uh, first time um, working through this type of process. Um, yeah, it went really well, and I'm looking forward to um, the discussion tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Should we move on to Sue? Axel, do you want to go around like that? Maybe. Sue Robertson? Good evening, everybody. Sue Robertson from the Tamahiri Community Committee. Um, we think we got a lot of benefit out of doing this 18 months, two years ago, and we've had our first feedback meeting individually earlier this week. There was lots of good ideas that um, were buzzing around the room, and I really look forward with interest to see a summary of those when we get those back. Thanks. Might pass the baton down to Tony. Should we go like that? Tony Grace. Hi there, folks. My name's Tony Grace. I'm the chairperson of the Tokyo Community Committee. Um, have been for a long, long time now. Um, and um, we have our um, TK specific blueprint update meeting next Thursday at Simmons Hall. So hopefully, some of our um, much loved community will be there. Indeed. Thank you, Jim. Can I call on you? Unmute. I'm Jim Ebenhill. I'm Planning and Policy Manager at Waikato District Council. I started at Council the week after the last Blueprint workshop in November 2018. So uh, it, was, um, it was already the stuff of, uh, of lore and legend by then. Um, but yeah, I've, been, I've been working on um, essentially finalizing the blueprints last year um, and working on this implementation project in this, this current round. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. Hi, Stephanie Henderson, our Kituika uh, Ward Councillor. Embracing the blueprints. There we go. Thank you. Councillor Church. Yes, good evening. Kia ora koutou. So yeah, Jackie Church, I'm also the councillor in partnership with Councillor Henderson for Araro Kituakau and looking forward to hearing from um, around our district themes. Yeah, and thank you to the subcommittee for your efforts on behalf of us all. Thank you. Thank you. And now we've got a number of uh, community uh, board and committee members. Uh, Rick, I'll start with you. Thanks, Axel. So, yeah, Rick Odom, I'm the chair of the Pocono Community Committee, and as we all know, Pocono is the northern gateway to the Waikato district, so this is going to be interesting for us. There we go. Leo. Unmute, Leo. Sorry, I've just... Uh, trying to click it. There we go. No, it didn't work. There we go. Yeah, I think you got it. 
It's not unmeeting, Axel. There we go. There we go. How, how there about is. that? Yeah, good. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm the Deputy Chair behind Sue of the Tamahiri Community Committee. Uh, we have great ambitions for this plan and for our community. Uh, it hasn't gone unnoticed, hopefully, that there will be the second largest uh, population in the Waikato district. And um, we've got some great ideas that we would like to implement. So we're looking, looking forward to what the process will, will deliver. Thank you. Rick, I think you, you could call us a gateway from the south. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi, oh, yeah, I'm Greg Weech and I'm Chair of Narrowhe Community Board. Uh, this is a bit new to me, so um, we'll follow through with interest. Thanks. Great, thank you. David? Kia ora, folks. I'm uh, Huntley Community Board Chair. Um, I'm looking forward to, I guess, uh, widening our blueprint to include some more, some more social um, attributes that we kind of missed last time around. So, yeah, it'll be good. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Ian. Carolyn, can you hear me? Councillor Ian. Evening all. Yeah, my audio is a bit dodgy tonight, but lovely to see so many participants, 21. Um, introducing myself, I am the ward councillor for the Onifero Tiago Ward. Thank you very much. And um, Teresa, do you have audio? Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so to, where you go? Yeah, I'm the I'm a communications and engagement advisor at, at council, just um, supporting this project. Um, apologies for the slight technical issues earlier. <laughs> Great, thank you. And uh, then uh, down below below you is uh, is Christine Madsen, and I think she's uh, sent us all a message. Uh, to say she doesn't have a camera, but welcome anyway, Christine. Hopefully your audio works. Can you, I'll try to unmute you, Christine, if you like. Here we go, you're unmuted. No. Yeah. Oh, hello. All right, we'll come back there. I think next on my screen is uh, Melissa. Would you like to reveal yourself? I'm not going to reveal myself, just with what's going on <laughs> behind me. <laughs> um, but good evening, everyone. Um, Melissa, I am the corporate planning team leader. Um, at Waikato District Council. So my team has been involved um, in blueprints right from day one. So um, yeah, it's really exciting that we've got to this point so far. Good. Thank you. Uh, Charlene? Charlene Price? Uh, We'll come back to you, Sean. Yes. Oh, no, yes. here we go. Kia ora, Charlene. I'm sorry, I was in the middle. I'm sorry, I was in the middle of eating a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Welcome. I was, and where are you from, Charlene? I was Charlene? interested in watching the meeting. Uh, Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you very much, Sean. That might work better. Unmute. Uh, Sean Jackson, uh, Only Ferro to our community board. Thank you. And John. Yep, John Cunningham from, uh, I guess I'm, I'm the John. Uh, Tiko for the uh, community committee, deputy chair, uh, and associate obviously with Tony, who's the chair. Uh, I think the blueprint exercise was good, uh, bringing people together and focusing. Criticism, probably the language of the uh, blueprint makes it difficult to translate the projects and I think that'll come out in our meeting next uh, week when we get together. I mean for example 
uh, we've missed out entirely on a train station, not even mentioning the blueprint, and that's transport stuff. So um, the Corbus thing was interesting, good exercise, but language, as I say, uh, is different from what the community can action. So I'll be interested right. to hear the rest of that goes on, Axel. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Appreciate that. And uh, we've got two to go to, uh, to welcome uh, Johnny, Johnny Kay. Can you hear me, Johnny? You seem to be unmuted. No? Okay, I'll come to Brenda. Lucky last. Brenda Roberts. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, nā mihi nui ki a koutou. Um, uh, Brenda Roberts, I'm on the Pocono Community Group. I'm on a subcommittee for strategic planning. So this blueprint falls very much within that and I'm here in support of our chairperson, Rick Odom. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you. All right. Um, well, that was a slightly unscheduled um, <laughs> start to the meeting, uh, but I guess uh, just as we're making up for uh, technical difficulties. Um, now you'll see that as uh, as the meeting starts, we are recording this recording this meeting, uh, and it will um, will be available to be viewed afterwards for anyone who's uh, who's not here. So. Uh, as most of you will be Zoom experts by now, probably one person at a time, please. Um, it's, it, uh, these meetings don't work if, uh, if we have multiple people uh, talking at once. Uh, and I'll also ask you to mute, mute your uh, microphones uh, when you're not speaking, please. Uh, it just helps us with background noise and uh, things like that. And uh, you just have to remember to unmute yourself if you do want to speak. Um, so that's about that. Now, what I might uh, just do is um, we'll start with a video. So if you can be ready um, uh, with your finger on the button. Yes, Jackie. Yes, thanks um, just for you, Axel. Just wanted to note for the record, um, Liam McGrath's apologies from the Mercer Community Committee. He's attending the Mary Mary com uh, Committee at the moment, but he'd just like to add that as his apologies to the meeting. And we'll be looking at it live streaming yep. later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's not a formal meeting, so we're not, um, you know, um, taking apologies as such. But yeah, it, it, trying to trying to make it uh, as widely available as we can uh, afterwards by by having this recording uh, go up on the web. So, um, in order to have a standardised uh, introduction to all of the meetings, we've got a short recorded um, a video where you'll see me actually in, in full technicolor glory. Uh, but this is something that will be uh, played ahead of all of the various local area um, meetings that some of you have already referred to. So I do say in there, uh, it's the focal, focus tonight is local, so you can disregard that as fake news. The focus tonight will actually be district-wide, but um, in all the other sessions, of course, will be local. So, Teresa, would you like to grab the screen and uh, play that video and let's see if, it, uh, if that technology works. There we go. First part done. Amihi o Matarik. Ki, ki a tato. Greetings to all. I'm Axel Beck, councillor for Tamahiri and uh, deputy mayor of Waikato District. My thanks to all of you who've joined us here on behalf of the many and varied communities within the Waikato. As we begin the celebration of Matariki, so we too, as a council, through our community blueprinting process, are looking to the future. In 2018, we came to you, to towns and communities right throughout our district, to hear what was important to you and what you wanted to see in your community in the future. During these workshops, we heard lots of great ideas and information. And in 2019, we asked for your feedback on the top three priorities for your local area, along with your priorities for the district. With these, we adopted the blueprint in June of 2019. 
The blueprint has already informed the very important H2A Hamilton to Auckland corridor plan that's being sponsored by the government and our own 50-year growth strategy, Waikato 2070. We as a council are now looking for funding decisions in the LTP for the next three years, 2021 to 2024. And we want to check back in with you about your priorities now. Are they still right as we've captured them for the first time around in the blueprint? Is something now substantially underway or even complete? Is something less important now perhaps may be viewed through a COVID lens. Uh, we're not expecting a complete rewrite of the blueprints, but these are lo living documents, and it's important that we check back in and make sure that they are updated to stay current and relevant. Which initiatives do you wish to lead as a community? This is also an important question. Are there things that are better led by council? Where should council simply get out of the way versus where's Council an important partner to facilitate and open doors to make projects happen. Remember that just because a project is in the blueprint doesn't mean it's necessarily funded or even that Council will uh, expect to lead it. Some of these projects are clearly long-term and aspirational, but others we can get on with and should do it now for the benefit of our communities. First and foremost, the blueprint should capture and articulate your community's aspirations for the future, short term and long. Likewise, the district-wide initiatives are the ones that are relevant to us as a whole, that might impact differently on different communities, but are relevant to the district as a whole, and all have their own challenges and opportunities. So, tonight the focus is local. We're checking back in with you and I will hand over now to your session facilitator as a member of the Blueprint Steering Group, along with the local Ward Councillor. In this time of Matariki, thank you for being the leaders and supporters of your local communities. Kia ora, and I wish you all a very productive session. Thank you for that. Um, and I must say, so far, the most positive reviews I've had have been uh, on the dog's appearance <laughs> rather than my own. Um, and uh, yes, I think uh, technical lesson for tonight, uh, Teresa, it's a, it buffers a bit, doesn't it? It doesn't, uh, didn't, didn't play very well. Anyway, there we go. The audio was fairly clear. So the, the purpose of tonight is really to support you. And a lot of you have come through the community board, community committee route. Uh, one, to think about the district-wide initiatives rather than the local ones that we'll discuss in your local areas, um, but also to, uh, to um, basically check in with you, does something need to be uh, clarified? Does something need to be adjusted? Um, John, you've already spoken about the language that, uh, that's used in, um, in the blueprint. Is it something, you know, that's could be put in a better way to, to resonate better with the local community. Who should lead it? This is a very important, uh, a very important part of it. A number of these initiatives are not going to be led by council. Um, we are, and we we acknowledge that in the blueprint process, and it's acknowledged in the uh, stock take document that hopefully uh, you've been able to uh, access as well. So who is going to lead? They'll they'll forever sit in the blueprint until somebody steps up and uh, and and picks um, picks up that leadership role. Uh, not everything is funded, you know. Particularly post COVID, we'll be very conscious of where money is spent. Uh, what are the things that are really important? What are the top priorities that um, that if there is going to be any funding go towards, it should be those. Not looking to rewrite the blueprint. Uh, but some things will have changed. So there may be something you feel was missed and should be added, uh, but in large part, we're checking back with you that, uh, that what we already have uh, you know, is still on track and still relevant. So tonight, it's not a workshop. Um, we're not gonna discuss all, um, I forget how many it is, 36, is it, uh, Teresa, something like that, initiatives that are in the district-wide. Not gonna go through them one by one. We're not going to try and reach consensus. This is really to support you uh, to think about these, go through these in your own time afterwards uh, by yourself or with your community committees, community boards. 
uh, but it's here to to give an illustration of um, of what it is that you've got in front of you and uh, make sure that that's well understood and 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 just reflect on a couple of these um, as well as any you might want to want to talk about um, uh, so that um, uh, so that you can take that process um, forward um, uh, from here on our uh, on our community's behalf whether it be locally or, uh, or as a district so what we're going to do is uh, in fact we're going to um, between uh, councillor Smith uh, Gibb and myself we'll pick on three uh, different uh, initiatives that come out of the blueprint so this is the full blueprint document that you if you haven't already that you can download uh, by going to the Say It um, button on the Council's website. And you can click through to district-wide or whichever community you wish. You can access this uh, from anywhere. Uh, and the initiatives we'll be talking about today are the ones that are in the first, uh, first part, the you know, identity, iwi, cultural, et cetera. So they're the big district-wide ones at the front, as opposed to um, as opposed to the sessions we'll have with you individually, uh, which will be at the local area, those ones, the local area blueprints for Raglan, for Takafata, or wherever. So we'll pick a couple to go through um, with you now. And, um, and whilst we do that, uh, Melissa, you may want to put up the, uh, sorry, not Melissa, Teresa, you may want to put up the the poll uh, at the same time. So we'll pick on three that we'll talk through, but we're actually going to ask you if there are any particular initiatives um, that you'd like us to talk about when we've finished uh, going through those three ex ex uh, exemplars. And that's all they are. They're just ones we picked to, to illustrate. They're not particularly important or more important than anything else, but just as an, an, an illustration of, um, of the process. So, um, Teresa, if you could put up that uh, that poll, uh, and then um, you can click on that while I'm chatting away. So just move it to uh, to the side there, if you like, and just just click on whichever one it is that you um, uh, you think we should pick a theme from later on. Right. So the first one I'm going to talk about. So I should pause. Is there any questions there? Is, is that is that clear? Cool, I'll take silence as acquiescence. Thank you for the thumbs up, Tony. Um, so I'm gonna pick one from uh, the area of nature, uh, which is, if I can find it. So that's the section here. Excel, could we get the um, poll off the screen, so? Yeah, we'll just, um, just to the give side. people a chance to. If you click on just it. Just move it. If click you on the top bar, it'll move. Oh, okay. Click and drag. Yeah. And I, I just the... kicked mine out, Noel. Yeah, I just worked it out. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to pick on one. Uh, you'll see within nature, uh, we've got um, some main themes here around uh, biodiversity, solid waste, low impact stormwater, and rural drainage, right? So these are things that um, impact right across the district in different ways. Uh, in different communities, for, for some, uh, you know, stormwater is a bigger issue than, than drainage, you know, so on and so forth. It's different, but there are themes that resonate throughout the district. And on the stock tax sheet, uh, which are the priorities that have come out of the blueprint, um, which is also available uh, on the web, um, the one I'm picking on is DW 2.2. Now that says review solid waste services. So from the main document, we can see the particular theme that was picked out here was actions relating to solid waste, uh, supporting education, review funding, analyze learnings from places like Raglan and their zero extreme zero waste initiative, uh, investigate waste recovery options for other areas in the district, uh, and investigate container deposit scheme options for areas across the district. Now on the stock take, I can see that the priority we gave it as a community last time was high. So it wasn't one of the top um, top two or three, but it was um, very, very high on our list. And actually the council note on here that it's already underway. So this is one of those initiatives where council says, 
actually, this is for us to lead. This is one of our uh, key things to, um, to take the lead on and to fund. It's important throughout our district. Um, it's a changing space and you'll all be aware of Hamilton City, for example, rolling out bins um, for uh, different waste streams, uh, curbside food waste collection and those sorts of things. You'll be aware that the government is introducing a container deposit scheme um, very shortly next year, I think, uh, which will greatly impact on the types of recycling we'll see turning up in our bins. Um, and what's left uh, will be grades of plastic, which will be increasingly difficult to get rid of, um, other than through to landfill. So that's an area where, um, uh, where you can add your support uh, to reinforce that it's important, uh, its importance. Uh, you could say perhaps that as a, a local area, you may wish to do more. You may wish to investigate or, or snuggle up to, uh, to Raglan's ex Extreme Zero Waste and see if there's some learnings there and some appetite in your local community. Um, or you might be quite happy that Council's got this work stream underway and let's see what that brings. So it's about reviewing that. So that's just one of the 36 that are in the document. What does it mean for your community? What are your views on it district-wide? Some of you will have very strong views in, in this area of, of solid waste. Uh, others will say, well, that's a core council function. I'm sure they'll get on with it. Is that clear? Does that give a, a, bit, a bit of an illustration of, um, of, of uh, such an example? I understand Any the example, question? Axel, and uh, just go through the process. So a community then looks at that and says, great, is this going to be through the workshop meetings? How are you expecting feedback? Yeah, so that particular one, um, because it's an area in which we, um, we actually um, um, uh, collect uh, rates, or we, we, uh, we charge you for it, in sure. effect, uh, uh, then it's, uh, it, it's subject to uh, consultation if we do anything different. So for this particular one, uh, John, what we're doing is uh, is actually reviewing our contracts, which come to an end. I think can somebody help me here? It's at the middle of next year. A number of them, but uh, I'm stretching it a bit. Right. So we're, uh, we're stretching, stretching it to try and get the ability to line them all up together. Yeah. So one is we we want to just as a uh, business as usual, uh, we want to. Uh, get more alignment across the different contracts in different parts of our district. Um, but secondly, uh, it is a space where there's a significant amount of movement, uh, John, as you'll be aware. For example, the container deposit scheme might mean that all of a sudden we have a whole lot less glass, uh, aluminium cans, and possibly some types of plastic uh, bottles turning up in our recycling stream. We don't want to be locked into a contract where um, the contract all of a sudden is, is charging us for a service we no longer need because it's dealt with in a different way. So we're trying to design some options about how that might look. Um, and, uh, and because it's something that comes out of, weight, uh, out of rates, we will be going back and formally consulting with all communities about that. Okay. Uh, and so from a community, oh, I'm, I'm being specific here on community committee, yep. how do we interact do we wait for the consultation and then go, ah, now we interact? Or is there some talking process here? Because that's also true of the other 36 or what other elements are in there. Is there anything that we want to react on and how best to do that? Yeah, so this particular one, because it's underway and because it's council led, we will come to you. Okay. So you can you 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 have you have to I guess as with anything it's possible to miss a consultation but you know you we will come to you we will come to the community boards and the committees if something is not uh, council led uh, in fact not led by anybody uh, then it will literally just sit here until somebody picks up leadership. Okay. Uh, Sue, can I come to you? Unmute. Uh, just a question about the container deposit scheme. Is that anticipated to be something that the Waikato District Council institutes or is that an, a New Zealand wide thing? It's New Zealand wide. It's a government initiative. Okay, so so once the government get that 
rolled out, it will roll out throughout the country, and that will mean that recycling all over the country will be reduced, we hope. Yeah. Yes, and, and that's why we're, we're, uh, we're a bit reluctant to, uh, to jump into, for example, buying new wheelie bins or, or some other uh, investment in, in, uh, in a physical crate or a bin, only to find that that actually is run, rendered um, pointless by, um, by a government initiative in this, in this space. Thank you. Yes, Janet. Um, so, um, Axel, I interpreted John's question differently to you, and I might have got it wrong. But what um, I would like to say is that um, all of the district-wide initiatives that you will find looking on the website and downloading or looking at the document online, you can feed back to us on whether you think their priorities are right, whether they should still be there or not there. So instead of getting down into the detail of how things would work, which we would do, as Axel said, with solid waste, maybe with a consultation later on, what we're looking for for the blueprint is feedback on whether the priorities are right, high, medium, top, very high, whatever they've got at the moment, do they need adjusting? and any comments. So that form is on the website, and I'm just not sure if we've made that clear. So Axel, okay. do you want to pick yeah, up on no, that? That's, yeah, thank you. No, that's, that's really good. And, uh, and John has, has diplomatically not said which one of us was closest to answering his question yet. Thank you for that, John. Um, <laughs> I think both um, answers are valid, if I might say, but, but that's useful because as a community committee, you've got to say, what can you do about this? We just sit yep. back and let it happen. That, that's sort of, as simple as that. So thank you. And, and I think and it, it's actually a good one. It's a good point uh, too. And, and thanks for, uh, for coming back on that, Janet, because uh, you might say that actually what council comes back to do, you know, which is not quite, but almost a one size fits all. Councillors Henderson and Church will tell me it's not quite one size fits all because some of our rural communities have you know, a different level of service in this regard. But let's, for the argument's sake, say one size fits all. You might say, John, actually for Te Kaufera, uh, that's not what we want. We want something that looks a bit more like Raglan's zero waste, where they take plastics code one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, as opposed to council, which only takes three. I think it's one, two, and five or something oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you might say, thanks very much and, and, and appreciate what you're doing. Generally, council, we want to do more. This is an, an issue that's important to us as a community. We're going to work with you, but actually um, we're going to take the lead on a, on a local initiative in this, this area because we, this is something we're passionate about. Yeah, and we can give that feedback, as you say. So that, that's fine. Yeah. No, no, I got that. Yeah. We're just knowing how to, how to interact with it. That was all. Yeah, that's right. And so all feedback, uh, so we're not, we're not going to take um, a note of all the comments that were made here tonight, and that is the feedback. Uh, the feedback, as Janet has said, is by the form, the feedback form that's on the web uh, or will be in, in print form as well at the local area meetings. Uh, so it's, it's really filling in that form afterwards, having reviewed the, the, the document in entirety and saying, yep, these are the things we're passionate about. These are the things that we want to highlight uh, for the district as a whole or, or for us locally. All right, well, at this point, I'm going to hand over to either Councillor Smith or Gibb, uh, you can fight it out, um, to do another exemplar. I'll, I'll get it over with, um, if I can put it that way. <clears throat> and I'm looking at the cycling and walking uh, strategies. So that comes up under the first initiative, under DW 1.1, in building a strong river corridor identity with cycle and uh, walking linkages. And then we go to the seventh initiative, which is transport. And under 7.1, it refers to the cycling and the walking tracks. And in typical council and government type fashion, it refers you back to 1.1, but I will drop then down to 7.5. And that talks strongly about the cycling and walking trails along the river corridor. And I'll hold this up to the screen. You probably, but that's the picture that is in the uh, blueprint book uh, outlining some of the trails and, and currently they are listed as the National One Tiara Roa, 
Uh, then you've got the regional, the regionally significant Tiawa, uh, from uh, Narawahia through to um, just north of Pitaru, uh, and uh, ultimately. And then you've got the local initiatives, and one that's highlighted in the uh, blueprint book is the Te Aote Manui Walkway, uh, Lagoon Walkway at Te Kofai. We've got others in the district uh, out at Tamahiri under Leo's stewardship, and we've got another one up at uh, Te Kafara, uh, where I understand there's 300,000 uh, privately funded wetland walkway uh, going on there. With COVID, people have uh, taken up um, recreation activities such as cycling and walking in greater numbers. And the feedback that's coming through anecdotally is that people are more interested in maintaining their fitness and the walking and cycling uh, paths, et cetera, uh, are more important than they had initially anticipated. So when you look at 7.75, you've got the considerations that could include promoting the existing trails, reviews trail strategy, and that strategy is, is uh, a few years old now, add the missing links and prioritize, program uh, source funding, secure uh, key links with landowners or the parks and reserves. I think it's community co connections team now that uh, council could lead through the community uh, and so on. So if I can just talk about the Te Aramanui experience. And, and I think one of the things that I've come to, to believe is that with this Te Aramanui experience, we should be looking at a um, case study, which could then other communities could take up because it covers off council funding, partnership, uh, community funding, uh, linking to the uh, Waikato River Authority, the regional council. Uh, and, and there's been tens of thousands of dollars over the quarter of a million that council put into it uh, coming from the private funding. So go stepping back, so a key person identified that with subdivision in the area, there was a huge number of riparian margins along the, the walkway, uh, sorry, along the lagoon. And that led to the committee being formed. And 10 years later, we've got uh, just about a seven kilometre walkway between the Te Kofi community and the Waipa River. And I know the aspirations at uh, Tamahiri and Te Kafa and, and elsewhere is, um, is to the fore as well. And so <clears throat> where, do, where to from here? It's really looking at these priorities. The cycling and walking has a top priority. I think the reality is if we ask the question, should it remain a top priority and how will council fund it? I think the community needs to tell us. Uh, and also, I think we've got to urge you to make submissions in the LTP as to go beyond what's already there if that's what the community wants. So. I've just touched on that. It's one that covers at least two of the themes, two of the initiatives, but it's such a wide and diverse, I haven't talked about cycling and so on as much, um, but I know some of the, uh, the tracks are for, for both purposes, cycling and walking. If there's anyone that wants to ask questions uh, now or whatever, I, I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but happy to answer or facilitate discussion. Yeah, so happy to, uh, to, to take questions or comments on that. So again, we're not saying that this is one that we are drawing your attention to or that we think should um, get support from you or anything like that. We're just using it as an exemplar to say what's currently uh, been identified, what's in our document. This is what you told us last time. Um, is it still relevant? Um, you know, certainly in our neighbourhood, uh, we saw a lot of walkers and, and cyclists in, in numbers we've never seen before, actually, through lockdown. Uh, was that a, a one-off one thing with, with lockdown, or, was, or has it actually meant that um, walking and cycling is now higher on, on people's uh, list of priorities? And if so, what role should council take in, uh, in facilitating uh, development of additional tracks and loops in particular, making loops out of, of you know, sort of different bits that have already been done. Any and questions so, or comments Axel, on that? Axel, could I just say that, you know, people should look at this um, diagram 
where it's got some of the suggested linkages to the existing trails throughout the district and, and whether there's support for that, um, but it's just a start. Thanks. Uh, and just following on from that, um, we picked up that in all, just about every community in their local um, area blueprint, people said walkways and cycleways. So instead of leaving it in, uh, say, Narawahe, Topri, or Te Kauwhai, Whara, Whara, we said refer district wide, because it is actually seems to be a theme across the whole district, not just one one community, one town. And if the council and the communities are going to get involved and do this work, we need to make sure that we link up. So we wouldn't want to make, way, make a cycleway that just misses joining on to the next town cycleway by 100 metres or something. It's kind of like, let's just look at the bigger picture, even though it's actually honing right down into the local communities, because I would have to say, without double checking, everybody said something about walkways and cycleways yep. in the original workshops. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Leo, I'll come to you. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I'd <coughs> like to endorse uh, Councillor Smith's uh, little homily. It's, it's a great example of what the community can do. And if you haven't been to that walkway, you should, because you're missing out on uh, showing the power of community. And it isn't about money. So my, my comments are addressed to you councillors who are here present. You have an incredibly powerful role to play in what is essentially a devolution of allowing communities to take a more active role in developing these walkways. It is not about money necessarily. Some of the stuff is cheap as, it doesn't require zillions of dollars. So we shouldn't get too hooked up with the funding of it. We should focus on actually getting the job done and making these connections because they're, they're all there to be done. And so please councillors, uh, you probably know what's going on. I'm sure Noel does. And, uh, you know, we're having a battle at the moment, which uh, seems to be going on and on. But this is not the forum to discuss that, but it's holding everything up at the moment. So uh, communities will do a lot if you give them the, the, the lead to go and do it and uh, under control, of course. That's not mm -hmm. always the question. Keep under control, but let them do it. Thank you. Under control coffins, that's what we call you around here, isn't it? Oh, no, yes. wait a minute. Was in... yeah. <laughs> well, but it's a good point. And, and actually, there's a lot of learning from the council end too, because um, some of this, when we say, you know, we're looking for a lead, leader on a particular project and it's not going to be council led, well, the answer is it's going to be community led. And what follows from that is that council has to let go. Council has to trust the community. Council has to let go. And that's Right. That's something council needs to learn how to do as well. Right. Um, you know, particularly when something is in a public space and will be used by, um, you know, by anybody who comes along, uh, council remains concerned that it's, you know, to the right standard and safe and, you know, so on and so forth. So a lot of learning to go and, uh, yeah, we're at, we're at the bleeding edge, uh, Leo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sue, I'll go to you. Oh, sorry, sorry uh, Noel, did you have a comment? Oh, yeah, just on that point, I, I actually, and most people know that it was Graham McBride who had the thought about the Te Ata Manui, but Graham has done some incredible work with working with landowners, with uh, community funders and the likes, and that's what's really been the difference, and I, that's what Leo's uh, touching on. It's seed funding that probably council needs to probably provide, if possible, but the... Um, uh, sorry, I've just... I've got a distraction here. Um, coming back to the the funding, it's 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 not that important. So anyway, I'll I'll come back to it later. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Just wondering about the the book that you've held up, Noel and yep. also Axel. Is it possible to get a copy of that in hard copy for our community committee? I think it's about fifteen dollars a copy if you'd like one. Okay. And so <laughs> how do I organise that? Uh, now look. We, yeah, there's, there's council can't afford to print some for everybody, but I will talk to Melissa, um, who is organising, uh, who's in charge of that area, and see what's available, and we can talk to you offline about that. Okay, oh, so 
does that include oh leo's got it right Ready, show does, off. <laughs> does does that include all these sections that you're talking about tonight the like dw 2.2 yes. and it's, it's, the, it's the entire blueprint um consult, consultation and layout etc so district wide in the front every community with the dw's and uh, yeah everything is there because some and of us older people have a little bit of trouble with working with online documents Ooh <laughs> All I can say is that we haven't got enough to give everybody a, co a hard copy. Yeah. I'm um, happy to pay for it. No, no. Well, Axel, can you um, look after that for Sue? Sure, I can. All right, Rick, can I come to you? Yeah, can I just pick up on that? Um, Noel, I do understand that you know these things are expensive to produce, but if we're going to involve community committees and community boards working in partnership with council on this, I think it's a small practical matter having each community committee and, and board having a hard copy, I think it'd be a, a very useful thing to do. Uh, My understanding yeah, was so. prior to the election, there were a number given out. And so with the change, uh, that may not have been handed over, um, uh, you know, at the election time. So look, well, can we take this offline and yeah. we'll talk internally and see what we can provide to the community committees and community boards? Probably no more than one official copy per, uh, but we'll, we'll have to see what, because um, there was a print run done and, and that's a finite run and I'm not sure how many are left. Mm. And I think I've just worked out why Melissa keeps her uh, screen off tonight, but um, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pick that up offline afterwards and um, I'm sure we can uh, find an outcome here. So $15 was it, Noel, and is it 20 uh -huh. if they autographed by the steering group or? <laughs> well, I think it'll be 30 with yours. <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, I'll come to the to our final exemplar. Um, would you like to take us through that, Janet? Yes, sure. So I've picked on communities because I that's um, one of the sections. So it's um, hard to show you, but there's the book, the front cover, and and the what it actually says there is. Um, it's district wide. It's about district wide community needs. It's about council communication. It's about facilitating local communication and supporting local events. And those were the four main themes that came out of those original workshops. Um, and the aim of these themes are to strengthen, enable, connect local communities and citizens and support those most in need. So I'm thinking now, when we first started this um, Zoom, David from Huntley said something about the social side of communities. And I think, David, that this community section is where that would fit. Because um, we did some follow up work and there was an exercise done to analyse the social well being of all individual settlements. And this work was undertaken by um, councillors and staff and with some input from others. And you can find the summaries of these of each community on the website where the full blueprint document is and it's at the end in appendix b if you're interested in that and it helps us inform um, everything that we're doing so david that's your thing that you could pick up on um, and there are 12 proposed initiatives under communities so i've picked on two of those and that's um, dw 4.11 and 4.12 because they are connected um, the first one 11 is council website and social media and it obviously follows that the owner of that initiative is council itself and it obviously follows that council pays for that um, but also, it's about supporting local communities in their own communications, and that's to do with the so website and social media. And as I was preparing for tonight, and I was thinking about that, um, we've recently had some really good data, thank you, David, about a lot of our district not being able to get online. So I think that this is an example of, let's go back and have a look at what we thought 12 or 18 months ago was a priority and in actual fact it only came out as a medium on both of those not top not high not very high but medium and this is where we want feedback 
is are those two initiatives probably not so much the council one but the community one is it still relevant um, and is it still medium does it need adjusting or do we need to add in there not just about websites and social media do we need to add in there something about other forms of communication so this is just an example as we said we could go through every one of the 36 or whatever the number is of initiatives and just have a think about the words in there, have a think about whether the priorities are right and whether we've perhaps not hit the mark. Um, I think, as I, say, as I said, the councillor initiative is already underway. We're looking all the time at that and we don't always hit the mark on communication. But what we've found is that through having Zoom uh, meetings and workshops, we've actually engaged with a lot more people. So we know this now, which is something we didn't know back 12 or 18 months ago. So I'm hoping that this gives you a flavour of um, why we need to check back in with you and see whether these initiatives are still right. And so out of 36, we might throw we, we might get feedback from all of you to say, well, three or four of them are just not relevant at all anymore, or they're already done. Um, so I'm hoping that that makes sense. I, I've got other notes here, but I think I, we're running short of time, aren't we, Axel? So I won't go any more into that. Um, so I'll finish there and hand back to the chair. Okay, thank you. So let me, um, thank you, I appreciate that. So again, uh, just another example. And Example, exemplar and some really good uh, questions posed there. Is it still relevant? Is the priority given to it right? Have we captured it correctly in a way that resonates with community or, or not? Um, these documents ultimately become community committee, community board owned. These are your, the local area ones are, are just that. They're your local master plans, community master plans. So, and you have the power to, um, uh, you know, to keep them live. The district-wide ones will be more owned by the council, led by the council, um, unless stated otherwise. But um, yeah, that's the, that's the purpose of it. Now, just to uh, Melissa has uh, sent me a, a message, and she tells me that two copies were sent to every community board and committee uh, prior to the elections. So you may want to check your own. Uh, cupboards, uh, Leo, you probably grabbed both of them, did you? But I don't know. <laughs> no, so there, um, there should be some out there, but for those, uh, absolutely every community board and committee should have at least one copy. So we'll bring, uh, we'll bring some with us to the local area uh, sessions coming up uh, next week uh, and can leave uh, a physical hard copy behind at every, uh, at every session um, if, if those two copies can't be, uh, can't be located. Okay, so just to, to bring us home for tonight, uh, I'll just pick up on the results of the poll, which was that growth and transport were the two um, themes that have picked up, been picked up on. Now, Noel actually covered um, transport as part of his uh, exemplar. Um, so I'll just pick up on that final one, which was, um, which was growth that came out uh, also top of our poll. It's tricky to uh, navigate, isn't it? Back to front. Uh, so, a growth strategy, affordable housing, and design guides were the key three themes that came through. And uh, obviously, uh, through the Waikato 2070, um, we've now got a, um, uh, a district growth plan with a 50-year lens that's been made its way all the way through uh, a formal process with council. So it's been consulted on, uh, there were hearings, uh, and uh, quite a number of submissions, both for and against various points, um, which were heard, and, uh, and at the end of it, uh, Council adopted uh, the growth strategy. Jim, you might have to recall, uh, remind me when we adopted that. Uh, it was just last month, uh, early May, I believe. Oh, sorry, no, no it, was, um, <laughs> it was before lockdown it was adopted, but we've just been publishing it. Right, so Jim actually led, uh, uh, led that work through, uh, through council um, and uh, of course uh, Clive Morgan, uh, who's also on your screen tonight, um, is, uh, is, you know, uh, leads, uh, is one of our general managers who leads the, um, 
uh, the, the work in this area of community growth uh, and connection. So really important bit of work. That was the top priority um, under growth and it's actually been complete. Uh, so that's since the blueprint started. There's a couple of other things there and I'm not sure what, uh, what people were particularly interested in in, um, in, in supporting this. Um, perhaps it was one of the others around design guides or affordable housing. Um, perhaps some of the people who uh, supported that in the poll or said they were interested could, could uh, speak up. So what in particular was interested, Rick? Thanks, uh, Axel. Yeah, rather than specifics, I guess um, the, the point that I, I that, that struck me, and I do apologise if this is clear in the full blueprint document, I can't because I can't remember exactly what's in it. But um, when we talked about, we've talked about a number of things here. You've talked about a few exemplars, and what struck me is actually there's quite a bit of overlap um, through the different areas through these, and, and um, so for example, and you, you recall last night's meeting, Axel and others that. Um, for example, growth is very uh, tightly uh, aligned in some cases to things like infrastructure and transport and whatnot. So I, I just like to see from, I guess, a strategic point of view that, that when we go and talk about it, we don't, we don't fall in the trap of thinking in silos with these things and they're all done separately. So they are all really linked and maybe having some clear links to where there is the overlap might help to form the, the, the full picture. Um, one other point, and, and I don't know if categories is the wrong term, but you know we've talked about um, council-led or community-led, which I think is great. I think it's fantastic. But I'll, again, I was thinking sometimes, maybe it's a personal thing, um, it can it can scare you off if you go well. Actually, if it's if it's council-led, then community committees and boards don't have to worry about it. And but if it if it's down as community-led, then that's our 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 baby, and we've got to deal with it. I'm wondering if there's some. Uh, there's some other categories here. So uh, what I was thinking of, you could have one which is what I'll call council delivered. In other words, the, it's a district wide thing. It's for the council to do. Um, and so community boards and committees might, might have some input, but actually that's the council's baby. And then there's a category of council led, but uh, community supported, um, community led, council supported, uh, and then community delivered. So there'll be some things that community can do on their own, maybe with a bit of money, but there are other things that might be community led, but we really want some council support. And I'm wondering if that might make things a bit easier and less scary for some of us, um, you know, who, who, are, who are doing this on a part-time or voluntary basis to actually get some things moving rather than look at these and go, geez, that's too big for me. I'm, I don't, we don't even want to touch it. I don't know if that makes sense. Excellent. If I could just jump in here. Um, yep. Thanks for your comments, Rick, because that's exactly what I was alluding to in the likes of the cycle and, and, um, cycle and, and walking uh, trails, um, walkways and so on um, and throughout the district. So you've come up with different names, but uh, we're on the same page. And just talking about the silos, um, once all these workshops are done, and I don't know whether I'm cutting over you, Axel, um, in your next steps, but the we get all the feedback in, uh, from the 17th or by the 17th of July, and then the steering committee with the staff will sit down collate the feedback, look at where there's changes being asked for. That'll go back to the council to, uh, with a recommendation from us as the committee and uh, then uh, look at, and then the bun fight starts perhaps as to what will be funded through the LTP. As you can see that Axel's already picked up on the solid waste. That's, that's work that's been picked up anyway and, and is being done because it has to be done um, because things can't go on as they are. The reality is, you know, there's a long way to go yet, but we've only got a year to get it done. Um, so hopefully you'll get regular feedback uh, through your councillors um, to your community committees or boards. Axel. Mm. Yes, quite right. And, um, and, and thank you for just uh, reminding me uh, of the date there too. So 17th of July uh, is how long the feedback remains open. So there's no pressure on you to, to rush away tonight and, and fill in the online form. You may wish to do it ahead of your local area blueprint. You may wish to uh, get that local session out of the way, uh, or even have a community committee meeting or community board meeting uh, prior to filling in this form. We do urge you to to um, to get to get that voice in. Uh, there is no pressure or obligation for 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 this to be consensus 
you know, the whole committee votes on on something, and that's the you know, feel free to put in individual submissions by all means. Um, it will inform uh, the LTP, just as, and that was the comment I made in my opening remarks in the video. Uh, it's already informed Waikato 2070. It's already informed the H2A Hamilton to Auckland corridor work. It's now informing the LTP. This is, it's actually quite a powerful community narrative that, um, and I think that was a record comment that was made last night. Uh, you can you can go to nine different consultations in a row and then you can miss one and it turns out that that was the important one. Um, this is a way that that the community stakes puts a stake in the ground. So, you know, no one can ever say you didn't know what the community thought because there's a formal way in which it's captured and, and makes its way through. So the document itself does not have statutory weight, but in, it informs uh, all of those other our documents and processes that come along the way. That's that's its purpose. That's its intent, and it's um, uh, and that's what it's um, you know wants to do. So I've just got a note here from Melissa saying the online form uh, will be available from tomorrow, uh, but certainly the stock take documents and all the other things are there um, are there now. Um, so I am just conscious of time. We've we've gone just a couple of minutes over. I'm happy to take any any final questions or comments that anybody might have. I really appreciate your attendance here tonight. Um, of course, it's not just for tonight, but it's also for those that uh, that come on and view this later as they seek guidance on uh, on how to um, uh, to give their feedback. Any other questions or comments from anybody at this stage? Uh, Leo. Um, could I ask Melissa, um, the, in, in nature, the development of the um, biodiversity strategy, is that underway? Is that what you understand, uh, councillors? Is that underway already? I, I might be able to answer that. Can anybody answer that? Yeah, uh, yep. Jim Ebenhill here, Planning and Policy Manager. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold, so. Um, conservation strategy is is due for a review and that's um that's, that's the next work item for our senior environmental planner who, who just started with us um a few months ago so now that Waikato 2070 is done uh that's what james fuller is his name i believe he's a tamahiri resident and he'll be working on that okay thank you thank you david did you want to speak or were you just uh checking in no no i'm, I'm good i'm all good Waving, not drowning. Okay, that's okay. Um, any other last comments or, or questions? Axel, because the um, district wide is so important, um, it, you know, across the region, uh, it's across the district. Um, I'm happy to be approached at the at the events that I go to um, offline or, uh, with the um, with the local blueprint. Uh, while the focus will be there, if there's any follow up questions. Uh, or else, uh, you know, I'm happy to have them fed through to one or all of us um, if we need to get information back. So, are we the best contact points, or is I don't know if I want to um, labour staff with any more work. Um, but if there's questions, happy for someone to to receive them, and I I don't mind filtering them. Thank you, uh, Janet. Any other final? Comments from you? Um, no, I think it's it's just hopefully um, we've managed to portray how these forms work. <laughs> but if you're not sure, there's obviously just contact one of us. It's just not a problem, and we have got time. So um, I'm looking at Sean, and I can see a little hand, but I don't know if it's a hand or something jutting out from the side of your screen. Sean, are you wanting to speak? Uh, it was just something jutting up from the side of the screen. But oh, okay. I'll just say, um, now that you've prodded me. Um, so I, I'm assuming in our local area blueprint, there'll be these forms available as well to do the district ride. So it's it's almost a, a, a separate sheet or separate submission, if you like. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's same same form, uh, but we we uh, we would appreciate um, a separate you know, fill in two, if you like, one for district wide, one for local area, just so that it's clear. Uh, I feel like the um, the relative silence from, from the rest of us really shows the, the gravity of, uh, or the, the extent of some of the, dis the questions that are being asked. 
and you know the um, level of thinking that needs to go thought that needs to go into those district wide decisions. I don't yeah. need the. Uh, no, thank you, and I, and I do want to just endorse uh, Noel's comments too in, in thanking Rick, um, because you're quite right, Rick. But part of uh, you know uh, eating the elephant, you know, is is to to just one bite at a time, and uh, what we probably have put up is it's either either you either there's elephant or the menu or you're going hungry. Um, when actually we could probably do everyone a favour by by reflecting the spectrum that actually will be the way in which. Um, these things uh, uh, shape up as we go. Tony. Yeah, thanks folks. Um, I just want to also um, pick up on what Rick had to say and um, sort of support all of that as well. Um, it's really important that we don't look at, look at all the parts of it as separate silos. Um, and I also want to refer it back to a comment that John made right at the very start um, to do with the language of the blueprints Specifically, when it comes down to the um, the ones for that are you know for the local areas that are involved, um, it's kind of interesting that um, depending on um, sorry, start again. There was a lot of really common themes that came out of all of the different um, workshop sessions with the local communities right at the very start that fed into this rather comprehensive document. Um, there were some stages along the way in between where a lot of it was based on how um, the consultants viewed the information that came out of those community-led meetings. So, you know, the great big sheets of paper where everyone had the felt pens, scribbling this, that, and the other thing, etc., etc., etc. Not always was that. I think were the were the really strong com common elements captured in an appropriate manner in the final document. Um, they, they sort of, some of the things seem to have been hidden in other, um, using words that don't really make it obvious to people that those elements are actually in there. Does that make sense? Um, so it's really important about the language that's in there and what people interpret that to mean. Where that comes into play now is that um, it, as John referred to earlier, when you're looking at the transport um, option, um, that, that was a really strong point from our local um, community, and which is growing, <laughs> and there are plans for it to continue growing, as you will probably read in the media with this, that, and the other thing, and um, you know, different associations that are being made, and so transport become like even before that announcement was made, transport was a really common and important part. And yet when you look in our specific blueprint, it's kind of lost. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying there? So that's where it's really important to pick up on what Rick has said, where we have all these, they look almost like individual silos, but we can't treat them that way because there's lots of cross link linkages between all those silos and that's probably now where we're at, that we have to rely on those cross linkages to feed in, to, to kind of take the place of where the choice of language or what was picked up into that document didn't quite meet what was actually being said. So I expect, yeah. I expect there will be a number of feedbacks coming back from our local community on that respect. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. No, that's... Uh, yeah, no, I re really appreciate that, Tony, and um, and I encourage you to um, uh, to grab uh, the, um, the the stock take sheet off the um, web. And I appreciate it. it's only just up there, so you probably don't have it in front of you. Um, but for example, if I just um, very awkward doing it this way, there we go. So this one here, for example, that first one, I know you won't be able to read it, um, but uh, until you get it down, but for example, it says uh, secure and improved bus service for the entire Waikato district, uh, blah, 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 Pukekohe Rail, WRC, et cetera, et cetera. So Rick, this is all of the commentary you got last night from um, um, Angela and, uh, and Eugene, which is actually, we've actually tried to make this as live and up to date document as possible. So that's in there now. Um, and some of that information will be new 
Tony, to members of your community too, the things that are actually already underway but are not visible and council probably hasn't done a good job of actually demonstrating what is underway. Um, but yeah, absolutely, if it's not underway and it's, and it's a top priority, you know, make sure it's, make sure we get it right in the way it's yeah. reflected. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I've, I've got that sheet um, on my, I was sent it, so I'm, I'm flicking between Word and Zoom at the moment, but um, to keep up with the stock take sheet. Um, but yeah, I do notice under, you know, those points with respect to the, the bus network and all that sort of stuff, there's still not really any, there's mention of like along the corridor, but like TK isn't kind of yep. specifically mentioned, and nor are they in the, in the uh, dear I say it, trains section. So, um, Ooh, don't oh, mention the T word. Oh, whatever you do. No, so, um, but that was an incredibly hot topic at our, at our local area workshops that, that, you know, fed into the, the formation of these documents and the subsequent stock take items. So, and, yep. and yet when you look at, when you look at what's written there, there's not a mention of TK whatsoever. So it's almost as if it never happened, but, um, yeah. I don't want to bang on and on and on about it here, but you, you can see you can see my point about how things get Absolutely. lost when uh, different just, language is used. Just to finish off yeah. on that point, Tony, we've all had the feedback from a number of our communities on this very point about the language. Um, we've got to step back and say, how did uh, blueprints come about? It was government uh, initiated when they were looking at the Hamilton to Auckland corridor and Cobus was employed by the government initially, and then he uh, was engaged by the council to do some work. He was working with two masters probably, and was looking at the government as the first audience for that piece of work and the funding and all that. And he knew probably more than what we did that Tikawara wasn't going to be in the first um, stations and probably consciously or unconsciously deliberately put it didn't put it in there because he knew it wasn't going to be. But as you're probably aware, council has made a decision that Tikawata is the next station that we support. Uh, and of course, with what Auckland's uh, had announced, uh, hopefully with Pukekohe being electrified, that we'll get to Tuakau and um, below. So yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. a whole lot of things, but we hear you. Yeah. We have, yeah, thank yeah. you. I, pre I appreciate that, Noel. And yeah, I'm, you know, I, I picked up on the fact that, like you said, he had two masters and yeah. one of them wields a bigger stick than we do, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just um, yep. So I'll, so I'll, I'll actually um, I'll I'll bring us to a close now. But um, Clive will give me a hard time tomorrow if I uh, it'd be remiss of me not to point out that um, that actually we did get our work underway before um, the H two A corridor work uh, came along. Um, so it actually came out of of our new um, vision process, and Clive was the the person who uh, who led this project. Uh, uh, for us within council and and after we'd engaged COBUS for this uh, government uh, kicked off kicked off the H2A work and also engaged COBUS which was a great uh, advantage for us and we basically turbocharged the project we already had underway to make sure we stayed ahead of the government um, so that our work our community narrative would be what fed into that document rather than government making their own view on what our communities wanted. Um, so, um, you know, hats off and full kudos to, to Clive and the team within staff who worked pretty, <laughs> pretty damn hard to, um, you know, to achieve some very tight timelines and, and actually get our voices in there. So that's probably a really positive note on which to, to end. Um, I really thank you all for your attendance here tonight. Uh, you've done um, not just yourselves, hopefully, a, a favour and, and have a, um, a armed with a little, bit, a little bit more knowledge can guide your groups, your community committees and boards to, uh, to present feedback. But also, as I say, uh, this will be available on the web and, and others who haven't seen it tonight, I'm sure will get some, uh, some value out of seeing it again. So I thank you all and look forward to seeing most of you uh, next week. Um, there will be members of the steering group at every every meeting, but of course some meetings are uh, two locations on one night, so we, we won't be, all of us won't be at all, but uh, all, of, all of us will be at some. Um, and 17th of July again is, is the date for the feedback. The form is available from uh, tomorrow morning onwards. Thank you all, really appreciate your presence here tonight. Yes, good night everybody.
Thank you.